The trapezius, also known as traps, and the latissimus dorsi, also known as the lats, form the bulk of muscle of the upper and middle back. The other upper back muscles are synergists for these muscles, so proper training for the trapezius and latissimus will provide maximum growth for the upper back. As it is always wise to get the most bang for your buck, a smart man or woman will want to use the fewest number of exercises necessary to get the maximum possible results. In the case of the upper back, if possible, you would want to use an exercise that will effectively train both the traps and the lats through full ranges of motion if such an exercise exists. The lats are the largest torso muscle and provide the much desired V-shape. It also has the largest range of motion and actions and a really good exercise for the lats must take the lats from a full stretch position to a full contraction. The lats originate on the spinous processes of the vertebrae T7 through T12, the thoracolumbar fascia, the iliac crest, the inferior three or four ribs, and the inferior angle of the scapulae. The lat's insertion is on the floor of the intertubercular groove of the humerus, the upper arm. The actions of the lats include adduction, extension, and internal rotation of the arm. And the lats also assist in depressing the scapula. Now take a look at the fiber lines of pull in the lats. Each of these fibers is a little bit like a rope pulling on the upper arm toward the spine. The lats fibers pull the arm down, back, and toward the spine. To fully stretch the lats, you must have your arms stretched out over the head. To fully contract the lats, you must extend the elbows behind the torso and simultaneously extend the spine, that is, arch your back. A really full range exercise for the lats will start with the upper arm above the head, move the arm down, back, and toward the spine while you are extending that is arching the spine. In reality, we find that we have to use it two different exercises for the lats. One that focuses on arm extension and one that focuses on arm adduction. That's adduction is bringing the upper arm in toward the body. In this video, I'm only going to address one of these two lat functions, namely arm extension. The traps are the largest muscles of the upper back. The traps originate at the spinous processes of the vertebrae C7 through T12, the nuchal ligament, and the occipital bone. The traps insert at the external occipital protuberance, the nuchal ligament and medial superior nuchal line, the posterior border of the lateral third of the clavicle, the acromion process, and the scapular spine. The upper traps elevate the scapulae. Their function is antagonistic to the lats, which assist in scapular depression. It is not possible to perform an exercise that properly trains both the upper traps and the lats at the same time. The middle and lower traps rotate, retract, and depress the scapulae, and thus function synergistically with the actions of the lats. Hence, a full range total upper back exercise would involve rotation, retraction, and depression of the scapulae in conjunction 
with moving the arms down from above the head and back behind the torso while arching the lower back to engage the lats through a full range of natural motion in alignment with their fiber functions. The body weight exercise that combines all these actions is called the sternum chin-up, demonstrated in this video by Ben Bruno. The online Poliquin group calls the sternum chin-up the quote, undisputed king of compound exercises for the upper back, end quote and I think rightly so. This chin-up variation was promoted by Vince Gironda, a legendary bodybuilder and trainer of champions and movie stars in the 20th century. As Ben Bruno demonstrates in this video, this chin-up variation requires holding your torso in a layback position as you pull up to the bar. You extend your head back as far away from the bar as possible and arch your spine. As you reach the top position, your hips and legs rise to 45 degrees in relation to the floor. You pull your lower chest or sternum bone to the bar so that your arms extend behind you, your elbows extend behind you. This movement combines pull-ups and rowing into one complete movement that strongly activates both the lats and the trapezius. Unlike horizontal rowing, sternum pull-ups fully stretch the lats. Unlike usual chin-ups, sternum pull-ups bring both the lats and the traps to full contraction. In this video, Bruno demonstrates excellent form, including a pause at full contraction on each repetition while wearing a weighted vest. But Gironda had his students strive for an even more difficult, advanced way to perform this exercise. In his book, Unleashing the Wild Physique, Vince Gironda, the man on the cover, has this photo showing how his advanced students performed the sternum chin-up. The man performing the exercise in this photo is professional bodybuilder Mohamed Makawi. Under Gironda's tutelage, Makawi won a Mr. Universe competition and placed highly in numerous other international competitions. If you know anything about the history of bodybuilding competitions, you might be interested to know that Makawi placed higher than eight-time Mr. Olympia winner Lee Haney in five of the eight competitions that they went head-to-head. -head. The full sternum pull-up can only be performed properly if you already have the strength to pull and row your own body weight. Here is my current ability in this movement. Using the supinated grip, which is stronger than pronated, I don't presently have enough pulling strength to lay back and pull high enough to get my chest to the bar. Some people need a scaled down version of this movement to get started. Fortunately, I have found ways to reduce the difficulty while preserving the general form so you can gradually progress and get the benefits of this greatest of upper back builders. To reduce the difficulty of the sternum pull-up, you can use your legs to bear some of your weight. I call this the fulcrum sternum pull-up because you use your feet as a pivot point. Use a step or stack of mats to raise your feet five or six inches above the floor. Set the bar on your rack so that when you hang with your feet propped up on the step or mats in the tuck squat position, your butt clears the floor. Initiate the pull with your upper back before bending the elbows. As you slowly pull up to the bar, you arch into a bridge position on the balls of your feet. This concentric phase should take three to five seconds. At the top, your position will approximate that of a full Gironda sternum pull-up, although your feet will be supported rather than airborne. If necessary, you can assist your pull with some push by your legs. Pause at the top and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Imagine you are trying to touch your elbows together behind your back. Release and slowly reverse the motion. The eccentric or lowering phase should also take three to five seconds. Continue for six to ten repetitions. 
This is another way to perform the fulcrum sternum pull-up. I like this setup because it enables you to get your torso parallel to the floor at the top of the pole, which means the resistance provided by your body weight is directly opposite the line of pull of the fibers of the traps and lats, which results in an even stronger contraction. Once again, you set up the bar so you can hang fully at the beginning and end of each repetition to fully stretch the lats. Instead of resting your feet on the step or mats, you put your heels up on a training bench. Your hips are in the tuck position and your knees should be at about 90 degrees. As you slowly pull up to the bar, you arch into a bridge position on the balls of your feet. This concentric phase should take 3 to 5 seconds. If necessary, you can assist your pull with some push by your legs. At the top, your position will approximate that of a full Gironda sternum pull-up, although your feet will be supported rather than airborne. Pause at the top and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Imagine you are trying to touch your elbows together behind your back. Release and slowly reverse the motion. The eccentric lowering phase should also take 3 to 5 seconds. Continue for 6 to 10 repetitions. You can also use rings to perform the fulcrum sternum pull-up. This is a little more difficult than using a bar with a supinated grip. As shown here, you can do this exercise without putting your feet up on a step, mats, or bench, but depending on your body proportions, you might not be able to lean back far enough to achieve the fully contracted rowing position unless you use some support under your feet. So folks, I hope you found that useful. I hope one of these variations of the fulcrum sternum pull-up can help you start to get the benefits of this greatest of all upper back builders. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.